Hi, I'm Dr. Ed Jacobs, the originator of Impact Therapy, and this is Dr. Tori Stone. We're going to be demonstrating a technique that comes out of transactional analysis, and it fits into Impact Therapy, which is an active, creative, multi-sensory approach to counseling. She's going to teach a concept called the drama triangle. I'm going to role play a client. And the way she'll do it, you'll see it's going to be very active. You can go online and read about, you can Google the term in, uh, drama triangle and you'll find information about that or in the, in the transactional analysis literature too. So I've been talking, I'm going to be a 15-year-old guy that gets caught up in all this drama with his girlfriends and his friends and and that's what I'm, we've been talking about it and Tori's been listening to it. Well, and then, so today, she's not talking to me. Hang on. And then, Ed, I got it, because we've been doing this for a while. And last week, I mean, you and Melissa broke up, and then you were maybe going to see Megan, and even though Megan and Melissa are friends, and I mean, there's well, just a lot of drama here. Well, and, and, and so, can I tell you something else? No, no, I, I want to show you something, because I feel like if, I let, if you come here twice a week, and I just listen to this. I mean, I got. I mean, I got notes here because I got to see who's who. Does it feel pretty good to do this all the time? I mean, to no, be I don't like it. I just feel time. like, yeah. and I can't concentrate in school. And I, you know, I was going to say that because I'm, I'm your counselor, so I check out your grades, and they've gone down some. So I want to show you something that I think that you'll get. It's called a drama triangle, and I think it's fair to say that you and Megan and Melissa have been in this sort of drama triangle going on there. So this comes out of a theoretical construct called transactional analysis, which is a, not a great name, but it's a fancy way to say the way that we interact. So we're going to pay attention to the interactions that we have with other people, the way that we communicate. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So it says that when we get stuck in these dramatic relationship situations, like, like you and the girls, um, that somebody can be the persecutor. <coughs> somebody is the victim and somebody is the rescuer. And those roles switch. Okay? So, today... Well, that's a lot of times I feel like I'm the victim, and then a lot of times then I rescue. Are you saying that I switch, or we all switch? We all switch. Every one of you. Ed, Melissa, and Megan. You all play a role here. So, last week, to Melissa, you were the persecutor. Because you're her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, and now you're going after her best friend. So well, you were trying the persecutor. persecutor. And Melissa was the victim. That's what she said. And then you had to then swoop in and rescue her. Well, then she got real angry with you, right? And then she was yeah, going to persecute was that about? you. So now she's the persecutor. Yeah, I thought when I rescued her, she would be nice. And then you became the victim. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. So you all switch. You go round and around. I'm going to show you this because I think it will illustrate it more clearly. So we've got a persecutor, we've got a victim, and we've got the rescuing part. Go ahead and get up for me. I figure I've been working pretty hard. You should come and do some work too. So last week, well then, let's let's not even do this because let's let's play, go over there to Tigger. Tigger is going to be the persecutor. So last week when you broke up with Melissa and you were going to be with Megan, you were the persecutor, right? Yeah. And she was the victim. Right? Right. And so then you had to move over there to be the rescuer. You had to rescue. And you thought, you said, I thought she'd be happy, but then she was crying. So then she's over here yelling at you, persecute, get over there. And then Hurry I'm up. the victim. Right. And then Megan kind of jumped in there, right? I, I don't have another person here. Megan kind of jumped in there, and she was trying to kind of rescue, you said. Well, then remember, Melissa got mad then at Megan. Remember that? Right. So y'all go, go, come around here for me. Y'all go round and around. You persecute. Then you're a victim. Get up back up there. Then you're a victim. Then you got to swoop in and rescue because some girl's crying. Come back over here. Well, this is ridiculous. Now you're mad this that that's ridiculous. happening. Go back over there. I want you to go around like it's P.E. Go. Around. Keep coming. Do we always go in around. order? Around. No. You can go across. Go back up there and then come back down over here. Sometimes y'all are going back and forth. She's yelling. You're, cr you're well, upset. This doesn't She's help. crying. You're yelling. I does that feel good? No. Do you want to keep doing this? Is no. Is this fun for you anymore? 
Because I believe, no. as a counselor, and that you kids do this because it, it, get, it gives you a charge at some level. It's, it's uh, fun. I, it's I don't want to do traumatic. it anymore. I, I want my grades to go up. I want to go to college. I want to go to a good school. And mom, you know, I need to get up to A's and B's. Well, then great. Come back and sit down. If you're ready to not do this anymore, then I can help you. Okay. That was a good demonstration of transactional analysis using the drama triangle. And it was also using the idea in impact therapy, we, we talk about there's, there's a lot of ways of being creative. She used movement and she used the whiteboard to, to try to demonstrate or to get the client to understand the concept. So that's what impact therapy is. It's a, an, an active, creative, concrete, theory-driven approach to counseling. And I think... For me, when I, I work with adolescents, the movement involved helps them to understand how ridiculous what they're doing is and how taxing it is on them emotionally as well as the people around them. So it's a good way to kind of have an active approach with them. I don't have a giant office, so sometimes I'll do this with chairs and have them move between three chairs. You can do that as well if space is an issue. For more information, go to impacttherapy.com.